Hello guys, Dave Nero right here, and today we do not have any gameplay in any form at all, actually. I'm just sitting in front of a camera talking. This is a first for this channel. Yeah, you haven't seen me do that before, have you? Um, so yeah, this is what I look like. Pretty gross, right? Anyway, so today we are going to be reviewing a book. A book called The Terror. It's written by Dan Simmons. Now this book was released in 2007, and it's technically based on a true story. Now, basically, it's set in 1845, and, or it starts in 1845 at least, and it's about these two ships called the Erebus and the Terror. And yeah, these were, like, like I said, this is technically based on a true story, so these were two ships. And basically, these two ships, back in 1845, they set out sail to explore the Arctic Circle, and they meant to explore the uh, Northwest Passage. But basically, these two ships, uh, to this day, have never been recorded recovered. They never returned, and yeah, uh, several expeditions were sent out to explore for them, and yeah, to this day, never found any remains of the crew or the ships or anything. They're just completely disappeared off the face of the earth. So basically, Dan Simmons heard about that, and he's like, that is a perfect opportunity for me to write a uh, historical fiction slash horror book. Um, and yeah, he, he did, I'm just going to cut to the chase, he did an incredible incredible job with this book. It's so good. I'm, I'm gonna explain now why I think it's so good. Now basically, th so this is a what-if scenario. Um, well, what, you know, what might have happened with the characters. Probably not what actually happened, but who knows. Maybe Dan Simmons, m in a major bout of coincidence, got every single thing that he thought up in his mind correct, and all this is what happened. Probably not, but never know. Well, you never know. Anyway, so basically what it's about, it's about the characters. Uh, Francis Rodden Mora Crozier, he's the captain of the ship Terror. Now he's like the main, main character. Like there are several main characters, but he's like, you know, the main character that the story follows more than any other character. There's Sir John Franklin, he's the captain of the Erebus, and he's the captain of the entire expedition. Uh, he is, because he's the captain of Erebus, and Erebus was the flagship, so he's in charge of, you know, everything. Uh, there's the surgeon, Dr. Harry D.S. Goodsir. Uh, he's another one of the main, main characters, and yeah, those are, like, the big three main characters in the book. Um, but yeah, there are several different uh, side characters that have their own chapters, because, like, each chapter in the book is focused on a particular character, whether it be from his perspective, like in journal entries, or just from a third-person point of view. And that's the thing about this book. It's not at all a linear way of telling a story. It switches from first-person point of view writing to third-person point of view. It switches back and forwards in time a lot throughout the book. Uh, you know, just certain things in the story just at times get kind of confusing, to be honest. Um, you know, just for someone stupid like me. And, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a relatively complicated book, actually, but... It's, it's really good. Like, all you have to do is just take the time to pay attention. And you will get a freaking good book. I'm, just, I'm trying not to, like, you know, explode and be like, Oh, this is an amazing book! Yeah, I'm trying, you know, to keep myself relatively calm, so that's why I'll be like, This is a freaking good book. <laughs> that's why I've done that a couple times in this review already. But anyway, let's, let's go ahead and actually talk about why this book is good. First and foremost... The characters are so well fleshed out, like, especially Francis Roddenborough Crozier and Dr. Harry D. S. Goodsir. They are, like, some of the better characters in books that I've read about, like, ever. Seriously. The, Francis Roddenborough Crozier is such a cool character. He's, he's funny, he's very likable, um, and his character is really fleshed out throughout the entire story, as you would expect from a book that is 776 pages long. Not the longest spec out there, but... You know, pretty lengthy, but, you know, not as bad as, you know, The Stand or Under the Dome or The Bible, something like that. But it, it's, a, it's a relatively lengthy book, and so there's definitely a lot of downtime in the book. There is action, though. And, yeah, it's basically, I, sh I should have explained this earlier. Okay, there is somewhat of a supernatural aspect to this book, it, like, but that's the thing. It's kind of a mystery. Like, you don't know if it's supernatural or if it's actually... Uh, just, you know, something that can rationally be explained. But there is a, there is a creature that's stalking the crew, and they don't know what it is, and they 
don't know how to kill it, and yeah, it makes, without spoiling anything, this, this creature makes for some very suspenseful, very intense, and very exciting sequences in the book. This, this book is not an action book, but when there is action, it's really well written, very exciting, and intense action. Very good action sequences, definitely well done. Dan Simmons knows how to write an action sequence in a book and make it as exciting as it would be if it were adapted into a film. It's th This is a very exciting book. But, yeah. So, yeah, th for the most part, yeah, this book is just, you know, dialogue, the characters talking. But it's so well-written dialogue. It's so interesting, so intriguing, very funny at times. Like, there's some parts to where I laughed out loud in this book. It's, it's a very... Very well written book in every way. Uh, Dr. Harry D. S. Goodsir, he's also a great character because he's, you know, he's not, he's kind of a hoity toity kind of fancy person. I mean, he's a surgeon, you know, so he's used to cutting people open. But he's not like the other crew members, you know, he kind of wants to prove himself and, uh, you know, kind of fit in with the rest of the, you know, the rough, tough crew. But he, he, he tries to do that and he technically, he just kind of can't and it makes for some kind of funny scenes. Um, but yeah, he, he's a, very likable, very well written, and humorous character, and yeah, or I can't remember if I said it uh, earlier. Like his chapters are written in the form of journal entries, and that's how you know you get the first person point of view chapters, and then you know other chapters, not journal entries, just third person, the third poison, third person point of view, and yeah, you just you know, you, I I got off track there. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, characters. Just basically, the book's good is what that tangent was going towards. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, so the action, the characters, okay. The story itself, just, this, just the storyline, is paced perfectly. There's a lot of slow parts to this book, but the slow parts aren't boring. Okay, there's a difference between slow-paced and boring. This book was never boring once at all through any of these pages. There was never a single moment where I was bored at all. Just the entire time, I was just like, you know, <laughs> I mean, I look stupid right there, but still, I'm just trying to prove a point. This is such a good book. Okay, it you really have to read it. Um, you know, it's been out for a while now. You can, you know, just go to a local bookstore, you know, Barnes & Noble, whatever. Just look in the, uh, just the fiction section, you know, whatever. It's your, uh, Maybe you'd find it in a sci-fi section or supernatural or horror section because it does kind of fit into the realm of uh, horror because um, there definitely are some scary parts of this book and there's some pretty grisly, like really thoroughly described imagery. Like if you don't like, you know, Stephen King type stuff, you know, really gory and just kind of lurid and just kind of off-putting content, you probably won't like this book too much because it's definitely pretty gross. Like not just in terms of violence, there's just... There's some, there's some gross stuff in this book. I'm not going to go into that anymore. But, um, but yeah, this is just a great book. I, I don't really, I, I don't know uh, too much else to talk about just because, you know, this, this is just kind of a, it's, it's not a scripted review at all. I'm just talking off the top of my head. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut this review off uh, right here. Uh, but my rating system for books, uh, if you, in case you didn't watch my Dynasty of Evil review, uh, is the same as it is for movies. I read on a letter grade scale, and yeah, this book, I, I gotta give it an A+. Plus. It's exciting, scary, the characters are so good, so well fleshed out. The dialogue is incredibly interesting and funny. Just, uh, they're, oh yeah, the side, even the side characters, like, even, like, they're, cause, um, or, you know, Dr. Harry D. S. Good, Sir, J Sir John Franklin, and, uh, Francis Rodden, Rora Crozier, they're not the only characters that get chapters to themselves. There's a bunch of characters. There are some characters that only get, like, two chapters to themselves. Even those characters, in just two chapters, Dan Simmons makes you care about those characters because they're so well-written, so well-explained, and just so interesting that in two chapters, you're like, wow, damn, this is a great character. And even some char characters that don't even get that much Expedi exp exposition, like just characters, just side characters that you just kind of hear about here and there from the book. They're just, you know, they're made out to sound just so great, uh, just so cool, um, just like, you know, made out to sound like just such interesting people that you, you know, kind of want to, like, get to know or just learn more about that, like, when, you know, bad things happen to characters in this book, and that happens a lot, 
no spoilers, but it happens a lot. There's a, a lot of, you know, some unfortunate things that happen in this book. Um, I, I'm, I'm just trying not to spoil anything, that's all. Um, it makes you care about those books. You're like, oh man, that guy who, like, didn't even get a chapter to himself. Like, oh, dang it, I actually feel, like, genuinely kind of bummed out that he, they're gone. Dang it. And, yeah, this is a very... Such a great book. I, I gotta give it an A+. This is a fantastic book. One of the, the better, if not one of the best books I think I've ever read. Uh, technically, it's not saying too much because I've only been alive for, you know, so many years. I'm just a teenager. But anyway, yeah. So, yeah, if you like this video, please rate and comment and subscribe. And if you want to, you can also share. And I apologize if this video got pretty rambly at times. I'm kind of, you know, still trying to perfect my, um, you know, my talking style, my video making style. Um... But yeah, if you like this video, please rate and comment and subscribe. And if you want to, you can also share. Get it out of my face.